Hey guys. Hey, listen. Uh, first off, I want to thank Sandy for keeping uh, all the all the birds fed. Uh, that was a Herculean task. Uh, driving 30 minutes to an hour round trip every day uh, was truly an act of generosity, and and uh, you know I, I can't thank her enough. Uh, and that uh, keeps all our birds around. And uh, looks like the deer have been wiping us out every night. Um, I'm going to pour this down below and I mixed up a new special batch for up here uh, to keep the doves and chipping sparrows not quite as plentiful up here. Need to refill this feeder here. That one, uh, I don't know if we've seen many goldfinches lately. I might have to put something else there. Um, I'm worried about the uh, hummingbird feeder. Uh, mix. I think I'm going to pour that out and put some new in. You know, being the days warm up, you're not supposed to keep that mix, sugar water mix out uh, too terribly long. It can go bad. So, uh, and they pretty much wiped us out of mealworms because, I, you know, I told uh, Sandy it'd be okay not to uh, come today because I, I thought I'd be here a little sooner, but uh, birds are doing all right. So, uh, anyway, uh, with this COVID-19 thing, I just want everybody to be safe and uh, hopefully, well, there's a nuclear wasp that everybody's talking about. Wow. There was a whole flock of uh, either blackbirds or starlings, I think, in the tree. And I hate to even say the S word, uh, starlings, because uh, I, 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 I've always wanted them not to be able to find my feeder but I think one day it's going to happen and I'm going to have to switch up some feeders and get some cages because those with starlings need to have uh, the cage type feeders where you put the food inside it's got a cage on the outside and it lets the little birds in problem is it doesn't let some of the bigger birds like cardinals and blue jays and uh, you know some of the other mockingbirds and doves or whatever uh, in, in that you, you might also want to see at your feeders so, um, but that's not a problem now. I just heard a red-bellied woodpecker uh, vocalizing in the background. Um, looks like we're doing okay here, but I need to fill that. Think about what I'm going to do here. I don't know. I, I don't know if this working. Good intention. I guess if I would have gotten brought some hair along, the tufted titmouses would be all over it, uh, pulling out for nesting. I don't know if it, has anybody seen any bird take anything from there. If not, I might put suets in there. Speaking of suets, I need to replace this one and this one. Um, these suet balls, probably. I don't see any mold on any of them, so I think they're okay. I'm gonna switch out the water. The bird bath's pretty much empty. Uh, a lot to do here, but again, I appreciate all the help. Uh, from Sandy and all the moderators uh, that just done a tremendous job while I, I hadn't been around. I hadn't been around much online and been around here to do the feeders and that. And, uh, you know, uh, I still want to make this a learning channel. I, I did put a video out from uh, some film I took in Florida, and that's out on my channel. And, uh, you know, the links get dropped out there every now and then of some birds, you know, we see down there that we don't get to see here very often. So we can learn some birds different places. Somebody asked, I think, about a meadowlark, and and yes, and the answer I think from one of the moderators was uh, those are more in open fields, and that is correct. And uh, there are some uh, meadowlarks out at one of the sites that I go to. Uh, I hadn't hadn't uh, been out there to film, or I did. I was looking at more waterfowl when I was filming. So, um, but maybe I can get some other species like that that are in the state here a little more variety to the channel beyond what we see here. Hopefully when I start my landscaping and, and we can start uh, having some plants grow that will attract some different birds as well because we don't really have any berries around here for the cedar wax wings and robins eat berries. I know bluebirds, I, I have a picture of a bluebird eating a berry. So um, you know, a lot of different birds, they also need protein. I was reading, my wife was driving uh, back and I was reading the book about planting native uh, in the car and they said about 90% of the diet of birds, of songbirds, uh, during breeding season is, is uh, insects. 
well, there's no insects up here. We got dried mealworms. That's about it. Um, and 96%, I think, of what is fed to to the babies is protein and bugs. So, what you got to do is try to plant plants that are native that attract the the bugs. Because some non-native plants don't attract the bugs, and uh, for some reason the bugs just don't see them or can't don't lay their uh, eggs in them or whatever. So. Uh, Planting native, I think, is important. I still have more to uh, read up on, but uh, anyway, just wanted to uh, pass that along. But I did see what was kind of funny when that, the, the bluebird couple had the three females. They were showing, they were taking their chicks to the mealworms. So uh, even though they were dried, they knew there was a source of protein that their chicks needed, their fledglings. Uh, they'd fly them over and you could see I saw two parents and three little chicks around there. The parents had brought them to the feeder, so you know that's a good sign. Uh, maybe they get a little protein here, but you know to, to get birds to stay around, to attract different birds, and to get them to stay around, you need to have some native plants in your yard. And so that's that's my plan for back here. Might not be done overnight. It's going to take a while, uh, so y'all bear with me. But uh, anyway. Again, thanks everybody uh, for tuning in. Uh, thanks for the moderators for the help. Thank you, Sandy, for, for the, uh, the, the large labor incurred over the last number of days. And everybody be safe, you know, with this virus out there. Please uh, take all precautions. Uh, it's, it's, it's serious. And of course, I'm in my 60s. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking it pretty serious too. Uh, so, um, but, Maybe this is something to kind of take us all away, uh, the birds and that, from uh, some of the worries that we have. And uh, it might be an opportunity if kids are home to teach them about the birds too. Uh, uh, there is a printable PDF out there that, you know, we thought about, you know, you, elderly people could use, but, you know, the same thing could be used. That printable PDF in my page description can be used for young kids. Have them use it like a game. In other words, um, print, print it out and give it to each child and tell them to look for those birds on the feeder. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of like bingo or something. It's kind of like, oh, there's a so-and-so. And, you know, the, uh, you can make it competitive if, if you want uh, little older kids or, you know, just give praise to the younger kids for identifying the birds and learning the birds. So uh, that's an activity that some people who are homebound with children can, can use. Uh, on, on this camera because they might get bored just watching it otherwise but if you make it a game to where they they uh, have to see the birds on the sheet when then and to identify the birds on the sheet uh, you know they can learn their birds so uh, at a young age and maybe learn an appreciation for them so uh, we pass you know our love for birds and all that on to to the new generation but um, anyway that's just a thought I had uh, when I was uh, down at the coast uh, but anyway thanks again uh, all the viewers I, I, I truly appreciate you and uh, appreciate all your support uh, qu questions are welcome uh, I'll try to answer them when I'm on the moderators do a fantastic job uh, some of them go out and do research before getting an answer and just come back with things um, and with answers and good answers and, and interesting facts in fact I want to ODLCE has, uh, has come back with uh, a lot of interesting information on some of the birds as far as the different names for flocks of birds by species. And maybe we could put some of those in the command so some of the moderators and even some of the helpers and all that who, who enjoy the channel can trigger some of the commands, you know, when, that are like interesting little facts. Uh, but you kind of need to have the command list. And uh, we did discover today somebody triggered the command list by just typing exclamation point commands. I think it was I think it was plural, but uh, to be able to just <laughs> pull down the list and there's I think there's 36 commands out there right now. But if we add to them and maybe I can get ODLCE to send me some interesting facts based on what she has uh, observed here, we got to keep it 200 characters or less. Uh, to input it and then we got to give it a, a command name and that but 
maybe we could add some interesting facts that could be sprinkled in there by the moderators that are kind of it's kind of context sensitive you know if you see American crow you could put you know uh, lands on the ground feeder you could type up you know a flock of crows is, is known as a murder of crows uh, you know it, it, and that's just just a little thing to kind of you know, a little interesting tidbits and facts that uh, I think that can help make the channel a little more interesting as well. But uh, anyway, well, let me get to work here. And uh, again, I appreciate everybody's help. And uh, God bless.